Let's take a look at a couple of interesting uses of the window transformation in data flows. This will apply to both Azure Data Factory and Synapse Analytics data flows. So you'll find the window transformation here inside of your data flow under schema modifiers. And that's because it's going to aggregate data and it's going to allow you to add new columns or you can modify the values within an existing column or columns. Now the basic premise of the window transformation is to allow you to perform SQL window type of functions against your data inside your data flow. So what you'll do when you add your window transformations, you'll go through the process of building what would be a window function and the properties of that function within your data flow. So you'll set your over clause and this is going to define the way you wish to partition your data. So in this example, I have some mocked up fake loan information. These are uh, made of consumer loans coming in as my source data. So I have a category that I'm using to categorize or to partition the data by. I'm going to take that partition of data, I'm going to sort it by member ID, so it'll be increasing from the lowest number to the highest number for the member ID, which is my primary key within my data. And then you set your range. And in this case, I'm going to look at the entire set of data unbounded. Now I'm doing this to demonstrate both the lead and the lag functions within the window transformation. However, if you're going to use unbounded data sets within the window transformation, just understand the performance impact of doing that. You're going to have to bring in all the data then to be able to perform the analytics and the aggregations using the window transformation. If you're performing a rank or a surrogate key, in other words, looking for a unique incrementing counter for your rows, it's preferable to use surrogate key for that or to use the rank transformation for the ranking. So back to the window transformation, the last thing you want to set then is the type of function or expression you're going to use in your transformation. There are analytics, there is aggregations, a series of different functions that you can use in the expression language. I want to first demonstrate the lag function. The lag will go um, by default, go back automatically one row. So what this allows you to do now is I've set up a window of data that is a viewport into my data. And I can use the lag transformation to go back one row. I now have row context within my data flow. So I can say, fill in for the previous loan amount, create a new column called previous loan amount, and fill in the value for the loan amount from the previous row. The lag function does have other parameter options on it where I could set the function to say, give me the value for loan amount two rows or three rows back and so on. But with uh, the, the default value for the uh, function is just going to be one row. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. But that's a lot of columns to look at. So I, I created a select transformation over here. I added it to just prune out just the columns that we want to um, look at. And what you're going to see is that the lag function within the window transformation has in the new previous loan amount column given me the value for the previous row. So it had that row context that sorted the data and was able to give me the previous row context. Now likewise, I can take that window transformation and go over here and I can use other functions in the window transformation. So let's set the window column to be lead. Since I have my row context, I can say lead, which is going to look forward. So this is going to be looking forward by one row. So if I change my data preview here, this is going to go from, sorry, I actually going go over to my select. There we go. Instead of looking ahead, sorry, instead of looking back by one row, this is now going to look ahead by one. So what you can see the difference is being is that the uh, number over here for the previous loan amount is actually going to be the next loan amount. So you'll see that here, uh, this row, the next amount is 7,500 and there it is reflected there. Uh, the next is 8,000 and there it is reflected there. So that's how you'd use a lead and the lag within the window transformation. Let's look at another example. In this case, I'm just going to swap values from one row to the other. So to do this, to do the swapping, I'm going to go into my window transformation. This time, I'm going to set the over to be, again, my category, like I had before. But this time, I'm going to sort on a primary key. I actually have a surrogate key in here that I use for my primary key. I'm going to sort on that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap my values so that it's easy to see the row number moving as we use the window transformation. Now in the range, I'm going to set just one single offset. So what I've done instead of unbounded is I said, give me just the row previous. You can also go forward and you can set in the offset the number of rows you want to go back or forward. So I'm going to say, give me the context of the current row minus one. 
So I'm going to have these two rows I'm always going to be looking at. That's going to be my context. I'm going to use the um, aggregate transformation of first. That'll give me the first in that list. What that's going to do is going to essentially replace the SK2, which is the current row, with the uh, surrogate key from the previous row. So when we look at the data, you will see that we have over here on the right, this is a slightly different data set. This is products. But you'll see that SK2 uh, with row number two is actually one. But number three is two and four is three. So that was how, then what you could do is after this have a derived column that just replaces these two values. So what you're doing here is we're swapping values from row to row. So that's how you can use window transformation and data flows to use the row context to your advantage.